Well, folks, Alabama has done it again. Uh, in their last home game of the season, number eight, Alabama just rolled past Chattanooga uh, in a dominating victory, 66-10, to 10, last one uh, in Bryant-Denny Stadium. Uh, man, really exciting. Kind of sad, though. Sad that, that was the last one, I'm not going to lie. Uh, the season has flown by, just being able to see uh, the progression that these folks, this team, these players – um, have been able to accomplish this season, man. It, it's just been nothing short of impressive. Um, really, I mean, just looking at this football team, uh, going back in week one, week two, what they, you know, looked like and, and how they came out, trying to figure out the quarterback situation. And, you know, to where we're at now, you know, they clinched the, the SEC West. They'll go on to play uh, Georgia in Atlanta in a couple of weeks. First, they have to play Auburn. But first and foremost, they took care of business today in their last home game. Again, 66 to 10, defeating the mocks. Uh, man, another impressive day by Jalen Milrow, passing for 197 yards, three touchdowns uh, before he sat out the rest of the second half. But we got to see Ty Simpson. Uh, Ty Simpson came in, and even Dylan Lonergan, a uh, young freshman quarterback, a lot of people have been talking about. Um, just, you know, a lot of takeaways from today. Obviously, we get it. You know, it was, it was Tennessee, Chattanooga. Uh, you know, not, not an impressive opponent, you know, right? Some people call it a cupcake game. Um, but nonetheless, the biggest thing was carrying that momentum. And uh, that's exactly what Alabama was uh, was doing today. Uh, they carried that momentum. That was the emphasis this week, right? It's carrying that momentum and, and and not losing that. You know, you build this really good momentum. And, and, and the last thing you want to do is go out against a lesser opponent, not play to your standard. But, you know, that w- what we did today was playing to our standard. And that's exactly what you want in these type of games. Let me wait till everybody gets in here. As you can see, I still have my... My attire on. I'm the sideline reporter, so I'm a little hot. I'm not going to lie to you. Jeff is in here. He said, now let's go beat Auburn, Christian. Roll Tide. That's the goal, right? You know, one week at a time, on to the next. We took care of business uh, today. And so, yeah, you know, Auburn's next. It's going to be a, it's gonna be a fun one. Get a little more comfortable, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. It's, just, <laughs> it's a little hot still wearing this. And I had a, uh, I had a, uh, like a corduroy jacket to go over the top, a sport coat. And I'm not going to lie, I was a little warm on the sidelines. But it's November. It's November. You know, I wasn't expecting it to be uh, so warm. But um, nonetheless, man, Ty took care of business. But you're right, Jeff. Now it's on to Ro- uh, excuse me. Now it's on to Auburn. Sorry, I'm seeing all the Roll Tides coming in. Um, roll Tide, everybody. We've got JD in here, Travelpreneur. Roll Tide, everybody. Yeah, but it's now, now on to Auburn. But just looking at today, man, uh, there definitely was some uh, – some impressive things, you know, starting with the offense, right? Jalen Milrow, I think he started off either nine of nine uh, before his first incompletion, really opened up the game with the, the huge shot to Jermaine, uh, Jermaine Burton. Uh, I think it was, uh, let me see, I think it was like 56 yards. Yep, he had the 56 yard bomb to Jermaine Burton on the first play of the game. Um, so obviously, Jalen Milrow's deep ball is still there, clearly. Uh, but he, you know, look again, doing some really nice things. The run game was going. And again, there's not really too much to really break down here because, um, again, it's Chattanooga, but we're just going to point out the, the biggest things. Um, Jalen Milrow played good, right? Running game was strong. Offensive line looked good. I think the biggest takeaway, and I'm sorry if I'm jumping all around, uh, but the biggest takeaway is we came out with the right mentality, right? And that was my biggest thing um, for today, right? My key to the game was coming out with the right mental intensity to play to your standard and keep that momentum, right? You know, you, you built some really good momentum. And, and if you go back, four, five, six weeks, right? This team has just continued to improve week in and week out. And the last thing you want is to go into a game like this and not have the right mindset, to not uh, go out there focused and to to let that momentum drop off, right? You can't look at what Auburn's done this season because they're starting to hit their stride a little bit, and we all know how a rivalry game goes, right? Like, they could lose all the games leading up to the Iron Bowl, then all of a sudden they're going to play their best ball of the year. We know how it goes, and, you know, as a player that's played in Jordan-Hare Stadium, I hate to give – them and their fans credit but i'll be honest they've got a, a solid atmosphere it's going to be loud it's going to be hectic chaotic um so it's going to be a challenge but with all that being said you've got to, you've got to keep your momentum right you've got to keep your momentum and that's exactly what alabama was able to do scoring the most points uh, i want to say since 2019 when they faced western carolina i believe it was um so so really impressive win uh, I, I get that the starting quarterback for chattanooga was out i, I get all those things but I thought we did a nice job, you know, defensively. Um, we did a, a good job defensively. The only thing was they just kept going to that wide zone, right? Kept going to the wide zone. They tried to get everybody going lateral. They're looking for those cutbacks. They had success doing that. They popped a couple runs in that. 
Um, and then there was they just kept hitting the little RPO or the quick slants, right? You know, you really got to you drive on that. We, you can't let those go for all those yards. But um, I can I can live with our performance today, right? Holding them to ten points. When they did get down there, we we had a couple nice stops um, defensively. Looking at the box score, I can try to share it so you guys can see it as well. Um, but as I pull this up. Um, again, Jalen Milrow, 13 of 16, 197 yards, three touchdowns. Again, he only played one half. He didn't play the second half. Ty Simpson started the second half. We'll talk about a uh, little, little uh-oh play he had on that nice <laughs> touchdown scramble. I hate it for him, but it's a great learning lesson. But um, you always look, give the ball to the ref, you know, hold on to it. If I was him, that was, you know, my, my big play. I, I would try to keep the ball if I could. I know it's not the NFL, but. Really nice play by him, but hey, big learning lesson there, man. All the way through the end zone. You can't, you got to hold your water. You can't get antsy, man. I know he was excited, and that's all that was. But uh, looking at the rushing numbers, uh, Jan Miller, six carries for 77 yards. Jason McClellan, six carries, 62 yards. Roydell Williams, seven carries, 52 yards. Justice Haynes, five carries, 42 yards. So a lot of guys getting reps, which is exactly what we wanted out of today. Uh, receivers, Jermaine Burton obviously set the tone early on in the game. Three receptions, 105 yards uh, with a touchdown. Uh, Kendrick Law, two uh, receptions for 32 yards. Um, you know, then then the other highlight, man, talk about special teams, well, two things. Number one, you got Will Reichert, right? He's closing in on that NCAA scoring record. He's getting very close. A guy that kind of had a uh, little, you know, little struggles uh, a couple weeks ago, but he was able to bounce back, right? And uh, he, he's closing on that scoring record. But in the return game, look at a guy in Caleb Downs, right? I was just bragging about him. A few days ago, just saying, I mean, this guy leads the team in tackles. I think going into this game, he had like 83 total tackles. I know he's number one uh, in tackles right now on this defense. Then today, he's second in tackles. I think he had seven total. But talk about him and his his efforts on special teams, right? Kool-Aid kind of had the muff, right? They put Caleb Downs back there. I mean, the guy is making plays on special teams, right? Just when you thought this true freshman couldn't get any more impressive, now the guy's returning punts for touchdowns. Um, I, I'll be honest, he's ar arguably one of the best freshmen I've ever seen that I've ever watched. You know, seeing him in the preseason, I, I, I thought very highly of him. I was very impressed. Um, but to think he would play this well um, at this level for a team like Alabama and, and lead the team in tackles, you know, coming up with turnovers, returning things for touchdowns. I mean, this I wouldn't call it unprecedented, but it, it definitely is, is, is. I mean, he's so beyond his years, man. And he's clearly going to be the next great to come through this program. Uh, as there so many are, but um, he he definitely stands out from the crowd. Um, his maturity off the field, his playmaking ability on the field. Um, I, I like what they did. I thought we would have saw a guy like Kendrick Law maybe uh, returning some of those punts, but I see why they put Caleb Downs back there. He obviously uh, has what it takes to be a good returner, but um, really, man, overall, again, a, a good performance uh, from front to back. I was really impressed with the the twos that that got to get their opportunity today. They came in this football game. We have a rule, right? If these guys are going to get into a football game, they've got to pull that standard, right? I mean, you, there shouldn't be a let off. We shouldn't see a difference between the ones and the twos. Are, is there a talent difference? And, you know, guys, you know, more veterans than the ones. I, I get that. But in our mind, look, you have that same script A on, right? You do the same things we do. You, you know the, the game plan just like we do. We expect that same standard. And, and so far, I mean, that's really what they did in this football game. The defense – Man, that, the reserves on defense, man, Sean Murphy and, and all those guys, man, they, they they were flying around. They looked aggressive. They did a really nice job stopping the run. Hell, they almost did it better than the ones that's, <laughs> sometimes. But I um, was really impressed there. You know, the running game uh, did, did not look any less with the reserves in there in the second half. So I, I love seeing that, uh, that those guys upheld that standard and they took advantage of that opportunity because we talked about on the, on the radio call, you know, every opportunity that you're on a football field, every opportunity that you get, um, you're being evaluated. These coaches are looking at that. Yeah, they're rewarding you for your hard work, but they're also evaluating. They're looking at, hey, who are the guys that can step up for us when there's injuries? Who are the guys that we can go ahead and start anticipating are going to have larger roles next season, right? Um, so I thought a lot of the young guys that got in the action today uh, did that. Um, so again, overall, just a, a really nice win. I, I was really pleased with you know offense, defense, special teams, uh, carrying that momentum. Feel really good about heading into Auburn. Again, we know the task at hand, you know, it's the iron bowl. It's the big one. It, it means this game means the most everybody in this state. I'm from South Carolina, but I learned that quickly and I'm excited for, it. I think it's going to be a good game. You know, Auburn started hitting their, their stride a little bit, you know, against Arkansas last week. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm not worried about it. Is it going to be a good challenge? Yeah, it's definitely going to be a good challenge. 
Um, but we're excited for that because, I mean, that's that's what you sign up for when you come to Alabama. Then, obviously, the week following, we've got the SEC championship, which I'm watching uh, Georgia on my iPad right now. They're up 17-7 uh, against Tennessee uh, in Knoxville. So, there's 6-0-2 remaining in the first half with that. But with that being said, like I said, there's not too much to really break down from this game. Uh, let's head to the comments. Appreciate everybody that are that's in here. I kind of just did this on the fly. My dad, actually. Um, it's at a wedding, so it's just going to be me. Unfortunately, I'm sorry, guys. We don't have <laughs> the pastor of pain. It's just me uh, on, on this edition of the Miller's Edge postgame show. But like I said, um, it's a good opportunity for me to get to all y'all's comments, and we can really just talk about whatever. Um, so let's go back. First, let's start with the super chat from J.D. Long, 499 super chat, J.D. Long. Appreciate you so much for the support. He says, Jalen Milrow for Heisman. Look, man, I would love it. He's definitely getting a lot more attention now because he's playing so much better. Um, and then this for a number of reasons, the, the increased experience and reps uh, gives him more confidence. Right. I, I think they're calling a much better game plan that's tailored to his strengths that we had been saying for quite a long time. We're finally seeing that uh, they're, they're really utilizing his skill set and it's really uh, causing fits for defenses. Right now that we're seeing quarterback design runs and him trusting his athletic ability a lot more is putting stress on the secondary. When he starts to scramble, those guys are starting to come up because they have to respect it's scrambling ability, and it's letting guys get over the top, right? So more plays are being made because of how things are opening up. So uh, he's definitely playing some really good football. I mean, the last two weeks he set records, you know, four rushing touchdowns for a quarterback, followed that up with the three and three, right? The three passing touchdowns, three rushing quarter, uh, rushing touchdowns, never been done in Alabama history. Uh, so, you know, he's playing some really good football. The only problem is, you know, the Heisman race, it's kind of a little late for him to start really hitting his stride like that to be – uh, a real factor. Now he's definitely going to get uh, some mentions. It's just in the conversation. But I, if I had to say, I think right now you've got Jaden Daniels and Michael Penix. Those two guys are kind of headlighting uh, the Heisman conversation. But JD, I agree, man. I mean, I'll at least say this: he should start off the preseason next season, which I know we're jumping way ahead. But the way he's playing right now, as long as he continues these improvements and these progressions, he should start off next preseason in that conversation, right? That's that's the type of player that he's developing into. I mean, he's arguably one of the most dynamic players in college football. I don't know if you guys have heard Urban Meyer speak about Jalen Miller, but he's been speaking very highly of him. He was putting up, up there with the likes of, you know, Reggie Bush and those kind of guys in terms of, you know, his dynamic ability, just, you know, almost just be able to do whatever, right? You know, he can throw the ball, run the ball. He basically, Urban Meyer was just praising Jalen Miller, saying, his development is is really what has made this team uh, as good as they are right now, right? He was talking about how they didn't even look Alabama-like against USF, and now the way, uh, with the help of Jalen Milrow and his progression at the quarterback position, this whole team is playing a lot better, which I do agree. So, J.D., man, I, pre I appreciate the super chat, and I agree with you, man. Uh, unfortunately, it's probably a little late for that campaign, but he definitely is going to start getting a lot more attention because of his play, and uh, I'm really happy for him because he's an extremely hard worker. And he's, uh, he's done a phenomenal job this football season uh, as a quarterback at the University of Alabama. Jeff says, Downs taking one back for a TD. I knew Saban had enough of old Kool-Aid and had his chance. I, you know, sometimes, and I'll say this, man, uh, I talked about it a week or two ago. You know, we know what Kool-Aid can do as a returner. He did it last season. He was arguably one of the best returners, right? Uh, but the thing is, you know, it's, it's about how you're playing right now. And, and for whatever reason, you know, he's just not necessarily – playing up to that ability right now. And, that, and that's that's fine. Sometimes guys go through the yips. They they, they have, you know, little spurts where they, they're struggling. They kind of get in their own head. Maybe that's what he's dealing with. I'm not sure, right? I mean, I know some people are, are saying, you know, his eyes are set on something else. Look, we don't know. But all I know is um, he is struggling a little bit right now. So coach made the decision to put Caleb Downs back there, and it obviously was a good decision. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to putting a guy like Kendrick Law back there just because I always get nervous having – guys that are you know such strong contributors right now now at alabama this doesn't matter you know i was on a team in 2015 when we won the national championship now it changed at the end of the year but for the majority of the season derrick henry and reggie raglan were both uh starting on our punt team <laughs> derrick ended up winning the heisman and, and reggie you know was our start middle linebacker so coach Saban has a history of keeping his his best players on special teams which is fine you know i, I get a little nervous having a guy like caleb downs or even kool-aid back there just because it's like Kendrick Law, you know, you put him back there. He is a, a big piece, uh, but when you're comparing to a guy like Kool-Aid or Caleb, you know, I, I just wouldn't want a guy to, to risk injury back there. But nonetheless, Caleb Downs did a really nice job 
of stepping up at, at that return position. So great call by Coach Saban. Great call. Uh, let's see what else we got in here. Uh, sorry, guys. I'm trying to get through all these chats. Corey says, Christian, why won't the defensive line come off their block better? Should have dominated Chattanooga's offensive line. Corey, look, so that, that's a really good point and great observation. So we were getting good penetration. We were getting good knockback, right? We were, we were playing physical, but you're exactly right. We weren't, we weren't getting off blocks fast enough. So sometimes, and I used to have a problem with this every now and then, where I would be so focused on, on controlling the guy in front of me and doing my job, right? If I'm responsible uh, as an outside linebacker for the C gap and setting the edge, sometimes I'm so focused on setting the edge and being physical with this guy, it's almost like I react late to remember that, hey, once I do my job, I've got to become a football player and make a play. And so it just looked like there's times that, that we didn't necessarily, like you mentioned, get off blocks quick enough and, and make some of those plays. Um, plus, uh, like I was talking about earlier, the, the wide zone, you know, they're trying to stretch you. They're, they're getting everybody to move lateral, and then they're looking for those cutback windows. So you really have to be able to, to, to get off blocks quick because those backs are just looking for that hole, and they're trying to cut up and, and, and gash you, right? Um, but that's a great observation. But that's, 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 that's something that's easily, uh, you know, fixable right you know you go into practice you're just working on you know we call it, you know shed is just shedding into your gap across shed would be shedding across his face back in the opposite uh gap um and th those shed drills man you do those all the time you can definitely emphasize emphasize that in practice and hopefully um you know it, it'd be cleaned up uh going into auburn right you know and we'll definitely we'll break those guys down we'll get back on our, our miller's miller's edge extra and, and really give you guys some good keys on what to expect and what to look for uh, to in that game because uh, they they're, they're playing better football right they struggled throughout the year um, but now they're finally starting to play some, some some better football so it's it's looking like it should be a decent game yeah, that's that's what I'll say about them but great great point there Corey I agree with you on that one we've got another super chat from Genevieve's house Genevieve always appreciate your support and the 1999 super chat thank you so much Genevieve says roll tide enjoy your commentary Thank you so much for your support and super chat. And, and uh, look, I just I appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with me again. I just, I just now got back uh, from the game. I hit traffic, and uh, like I said, I still got all my, <laughs> my my suit, tie, all that crap on. But I just wanted to hop on here and break down the game. But, but no, thank you guys for hanging out, man. That's why, I, I it, you know, it's unfortunate my dad's not on. He's at that wedding, but I get to really kind of go through these comments and chat with you guys. I wish I had it where we could do it like our radio show, which again. The Miller's Edge, you can listen to our radio show Monday through Friday on Tide, 100.9, 11 a.m. to 12 every single day. And uh, it doesn't have to be FM. You can download the app, Tide 100.9, on your app store or go to the website and hear us there. You can call in and talk to us. Um, but I'll, I'll try to figure it out. I, I see other people that have call-in shows. I'd love to figure that out. If you guys um, have any advice on that and know how to set that up, I'd be glad to. That way we can get you guys calling in. But we'll roll with the chats for now. But Again, roll tide, Genevieve. Again, everybody should be pleased with this win. Really good win. Got to see a lot of uh, guys, young faces get in some uh, action today, which is really cool. And so, again, I, I like the momentum that we have going into Auburn. So, again, thank you so much, Genevieve, for always being so supportive in your super chat today. Uh, whoa. <laughs> Huge super chat. I hope uh, – man, I hope – Sam, I hope this this might have been a mistake. Um, Sam, I, I was about to say, if, if this is a mistake, hopefully we can help – uh, correct this um i don't necessarily know how but i will make sure i, I do my best to, to figure it out or I, i'll i'll go to whatever measure i have to do to, to correct it hopefully um we can get that figured out because I, I don't know if you meant to do that but that, that is insane um wow uh, yeah i'm i'm assuming that was an error <laughs> wow sam that's crazy um we'll figure that out but let me get to your comment now I'll, I'll definitely make sure i um Make sure you meant to do that. If it was an accident, I promise we'll get that cleared up. But, wow, $500 super chat, at least for now, from Sam. Sam with the breakdown. Sam says, the good. Jalen Milrow, Caleb Downs, and a lot of guys getting to play. The bad, poor tackling, the wrong, long run and pass plays, and the 100 rusher on defense, the ugly. Uh, Reichert, extra point, Kool-Aid's fumble and confidence, and Ty Simpson dropping the ball prior to crossing the goal line. Um, all right, here we go. So I agree. Jalen Milrow, Caleb Downs, most definitely, you know, bright spots um, on, on this football team today. A lot of guys getting to play. I agree. That's what, that's what all these games are, are really good for. My dad was complaining about playing this type of game at this point in the season. I said, look, I get it. Uh, but I almost view it as, look, you got to look at some of the positives, right? The second half, 
a lot of guys started to be able to get the rest of the, the starters. I mean, they started getting some rest. Young guys got some valuable experience. That's a positive, right? Especially when you've been going through a grueling schedule uh, of SEC play, right? Um, but let's get back to your point. You said the bad, poor tackling. Uh, definitely should have cleaned up some tackling uh, today. And those long runs and passes, again, that that wide zone, they, they, they've got to they, – you got to cross shed, get off your block quicker, and you got to have guys really pursuing on the backside, uh, making sure that they're there for those cutbacks. And then on those pass plays, on those slants, man, we just had a little too much cushion. You got to drive on that, right? You got to really drive on the football, especially when you know that's really what they're doing. They really just wanted to do the quick pass. They didn't trust their their offensive line and pass pro. You got to, you know, I, I get, you know, coverage might be telling you to be here. But as a football player, sometimes you got to be a little more instinctive and, and just be prepared because you know what they're going to. Um, but yeah, no, other than that, no, I mean, Sam, I think you're spot on. I mean, that's, I agree with all your points. Kool Aid's fumble and confidence. I mean, hopefully he gets that confidence back, but we see we've got Caleb Downs available. And then Ty Simpson, man, yeah, it's a rookie mistake, right? And, and I don't mean it like that in, in a bad way. It's just a, he's young, he's excited, he just made a hell of a play, right? He, he escapes the pocket. I mean, he runs, I think it was like 75, 76 yards and really displayed his athleticism, got antsy, got excited, let the ball go. But I'm telling you right now, so what we do as, as a team, we, we, and on Mondays we have the good, the bad, and the ugly. Exactly like what you just did, Sam, but Coach Saban does it while we're in our team meeting. And he's going to show, he's going to highlight a few plays from the good, highlight a few, bad play, a few plays of the bad and a few plays of the ugly. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now, that play is going to be on the ugly. And normally when he gets to the ugly, he's not <laughs> he's not very nice when he gets to the ugly. But, again, it's a good learning lesson. I think – I'll tell you, think, uh, if you're going to have that happen, you have it happen against Chattanooga in a game like this. That way, that doesn't happen uh, on the road at Auburn when it might matter when you're playing the SEC championship against Georgia. Because if that happens then, that can be a critical error. And that could, that could kill the game, right? But luckily it happened in this situation where it can be a great learning point. Um, let's see. Sam says, "Yes, it was a mistake, but if not, Merry, if, but if not, Merry Christmas." Uh, I, well, I guess you tell us, Sam. <laughs> I th so I think you said it is a mistake. So I'll try to figure that out. If you guys know um, how to reverse a uh, a super chat, I'm sure I can probably figure it out on my end. Um, I'm looking right now. The only option is to give me Sam is to put. Put you in timeout, which we don't definitely don't want to do that, <laughs> or ban you and ban you and delete your comments, which we're not we're not doing that. You didn't do anything wrong at all. We'll figure it out, Sam. I promise. Um, if not, I guess I'll just have to Venmo you, <laughs> Venmo you or Cash App you, or something, and we'll figure it out. I promise. Um, but if we can't figure it out here, find my email. If you go to our website, themillersedge.com, go to contact, email me, um, and we definitely can figure something out because I, I I don't. That's a lot of money, man. I definitely appreciate your support, but I I would definitely don't want. To, <laughs> that's a mistake. We don't want to. We don't want to take that from your brother. Um, but yeah, great points with your good, bad, and ugly. Uh, what else do we have, folks? We've got Jeff says Ty will learn. He's really showed growth and getting game time experience and confidence in his game today. Oh, he's definitely shown a lot of growth and improvement. You know, seeing him in the preseason. Um, I'll be honest, he looks like a totally different football player right now than he did in the preseason. He looks way more confident. He controls the offense a lot better, right? He's doing some really good things every time that he's been in the football game. Um, and I'll say this. We've already known he's been he's a great passer, right? He's accurate. He's got nice motion. He he does a lot of things. Well, the thing that was kind of setting him back was he would get in his own head, right? He would he, – it's hard for him to move past some mistakes sometimes. There's there's times where, you know, he just is a young player. He makes some some young player mistakes. And in my opinion, I've seen a lot of growth like like you, Jeff. I've seen him grow a lot. And even though these have just been, you know, a few games that he's gotten some action, you can clearly tell those practice reps that he's taken uh, as a number two quarterback are really paying off, and he's playing a lot better. So, you know, again, not jumping ahead to next season, but it's going to be really interesting. I mean, you've got Jalen Milrow, who's improving, playing some really good football, truly one of the most dynamic players in the country. He's obviously going to start off as your quarterback next year, but, you know, you got a guy like Ty Simpson who's, who's going to be eager to compete for that job. He's going – uh, to get better and better, he's improving. And so, you know, that's going to be something to look out for. But you got to be where your feet are. You know, hopefully we can keep all the guys and keep everybody happy. But more than likely, this is going to be a, a very, uh, very good competition going into next season because both these guys, then you got uh, Julian Sand coming in. 
Um, these, they're going to have a, lot, a really nice quarterback room. Now, obviously, you know, if people can transfer. We'll see how everything plays out. But that's way too far ahead. We're not, we're not getting there. But in, in all, Jeff, I agree. You know, definitely a lot of progress has been made um, for both guys, Jalen Milrow and Ty Simpson. So that's really good because it makes you feel better. You never know what can happen. We saw Jalen Milrow get a little banged up when he took that shot against Kentucky. Luckily, he was able to come right back in. But seeing Ty Simpson and his progress, the way he can operate this offense and move down the field and use his athleticism, it makes you feel really good um, if you need him for any security reasons. And I'll be honest, right? You, you never know. I mean, and I'm not saying this is anything close, but the team that I was on where we won the national championship against Georgia, second and 26 when Tua came in, we didn't necessarily anticipate having to put Tua in the football game. It just worked out that way, and the rest was history, right? So um, you always want to have as many good players as you can, even if they're not your starter. Uh, the more – the, the more athletes you have that, that can play winning football, the better your football team is. Um, let's see what else we have. <laughs> Sam says, oh, don't worry, bro. I have some OT coming up, and it's all good. Merry Christmas to you and the pastor of pain. Sam, are you sure, man? That's crazy, man. I, gosh, man. If, or, like I said, I have no problem trying to figure this out and do anything. Just get with me on that. But if, if so, man, dang, well, happy holidays. And happy Thanksgiving to you and Merry Christmas to you. But that's, man, wow. Thank you so much. That's wow. I, my, I wish my dad was on and he would start doing his little dance, which I'm glad he's not here doing that because it's embarrassing. But I know you guys enjoy all that entertainment that he does. Um, but I'll, I'll definitely relay that to him. And man, he's going to be <laughs> he's going to be ecstatic. But what else you guys got? What are, what are your thoughts? Uh, what are, what's, your, what's your thoughts after seeing the performance today? Were, were you pleased? Sam gave us a really good breakdown of his, of his good, bad and ugly pretty much echoing a lot of the stuff that I was saying. Is there anything else you guys thought that you saw? Are there any young guys that got in there that you were pleased with? One thing I didn't mention, I, I forgot to mention this, uh, Devontae Smith, and not the receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles, uh, but safety to Devontae Smith, the guy that was running with the starters in the first team uh, during preseason before he, I think he had a foot injury. Uh, he hasn't played all season, uh, you know, coming back from that injury. He's been rehabbing and he's been out, but we saw him today in action. And he filled in, and he was all over the place, man. I mean, this dude was coming up in run support, driving on the football. Uh, he looked really good, right, especially for a guy that hasn't played in, what is this, like week 11 or week whatever it is for college football, right? Um, normally, guys, when you come back from that long, right, like when I tore my bicep, I don't know if you guys remember, I tore my bicep in 2017 against Florida State in the first game. I was out for nine weeks, maybe 10 weeks, something like that. Came back to face Auburn. And I'll be honest, man, I mean, I, I had to knock the rust off. It had been a while, right? I mean, I had to get back in football shape. I had to get back in the right uh, – you know what I mean? Because when you come back, you start working towards it. But that's a long time of not really playing football, and you miss out on a lot of reps. Devontae Smith, man, he looked like he hadn't missed a beat. And he was all over the field, and that's going to be huge, especially going in uh, to these important weeks coming up. You know, Auburn, Georgia, got a guy in Jalen Key that's been battling injuries. I'm, I'm sure he should be probably ready to play hopefully next week. But if not, Devontae Smith, again, who was running with the first team in preseason, uh, is back from injury and did some really nice things today. I don't know if you guys caught that. Uh, he's wearing number eight uh, in the secondary. Christian Story, uh, another uh, veteran that, that's been a, a quality depth piece for, for this defense, came up with a nice interception today. He stepped up big. So uh, one thing is, man, we've got some good depth on this football team. And obviously it helps. Uh, when you recruit so well, like Coach Saban does, but it's important that you're able to develop the talent as well. And that's what we're starting to see. These guys have been developing. Uh, we have some guys that can fill in. You look at Deontay Lawson, he's out. Jahad Campbell stepping up nicely. He led the team in tackles today. I think he had, uh, I believe he had 10 tackles, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yep, 10 tackles total in a pass deflection. So Jahad Campbell, another guy stepping up, gotten some really valuable experience this season with Deontay Lawson now. So, that's one thing I've been really impressed with. Whenever a guy goes down, uh, the guys that come in or, or get moved around, you know, sometimes you see Amos goes to corner, uh, Terry on moves to slot, right? Malachi bunks back to safety. The adjustments that are made and the guys stepping in in their place, man, we, we haven't really had a drop off. And that's huge. That, that That's a big deal because we've had a lot of guys go down. I mean, Jaheim Otis has been banged up all season. Tim Keenan has been playing really good football. Tim Smith. Uh, so we have a lot of depth on this football team. That helps out a lot, man. It's really important to have that depth. Uh, let's see. Willie's in here. He says, roll tie, roll all of Bama Nation. Exactly, man. Everybody's feeling good. I think Bama Nation's feeling good, especially going into this Auburn game, man. We got to take care of business. Y'all know what that means. I mean, it's 
it's Auburn, right? We already know about that, but I'm 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 excited for for this Auburn game. Iron Bowl is always fun, always fun. Is anybody going to the Iron Bowl? I know you probably hate Auburn, but is anybody planning on going? Let's see. Mary's here. She says I was really impressed with all the backups. The backups on defense didn't allow a score in the fourth quarter at all. They were impressive, Mary, and, that, and that's what I was saying. I mean, the rule is if y'all are going to have the opportunity to play, you've got to uphold the standard. And that's what they did, man. Like, and and. Yeah, they were, you know, making plays, but I was, you know, just watching them down on the sideline, man. And these guys were just eager. Like I could see them almost like twitching before the snap. And that's what's fun about these young, these young guys, man. Like they want those snaps. So finally, when they get that opportunity, oh, they're they're man, they're hungry and they they're ready to get after. It. And that's exactly what they did. And I'm I'm really pleased with that. You know, sometimes you see the the reserve guys get in the game and you know, there's a there's a bust and you know, Coach Saban's flipping out, but I don't think we really had that today. I mean, the, the reserves got in there and they, and they looked good. Now, obviously, Chattanooga and they probably had their backups in, but I was really pleased with the backups that got to play today. So that's really good. Again, the, the biggest thing from this week was to carry the momentum that we've established the last few weeks in SEC play. And I thought we did a great job of that. Offensively, defensively for the most part, special teams for the most part. You know, I, I get, you know, Kool-Aid situation, but Caleb Downs coming in, picking it right back up, right? So – uh, really good stuff today from everybody uh, on this football team. And I was talking to some of the staff on the sideline and and I was just talking about the growth that we've seen from this team. And, and they said, man, it's, it's the mindset of these guys. These guys work extremely hard. They believe in each other and they they want to succeed. Right. So it, it all makes sense, because, I mean, again, you go back and look at how this team was performing you know, the first three weeks. They were just trying to find their niche. They they needed to they needed to find you know what worked right. The coaches needed to find who are the best pieces right. Like for instance, you know Roberts at right guard right. He didn't start playing until a few weeks in. They put him in there. They realized this guy needs to be playing. This guy is a mauler. He's a big physical guy right. Sometimes it takes time for coaches to find the right guys, the right fits. There's a, a you know issue at quarterback. We didn't have our quarterback figured out until really week four because week three was <laughs> USF. We didn't even have a, a set starter right. Once this team kind of – once they established who were their guys and they slowly started building their chemistry, we just saw improvement week after week. And uh, to hear the staff just talk about the mindset of this team and just how impressed they were, which is how everybody's bought in. They want – they all want to improve. Everybody's doing what they need to do to play their role and play for each other, man. Um, it's, 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 it's truly remarkable, and, and I'm really excited. I understand why Coach, C, Coach Saban is just so proud of this team because uh, he, he really probably didn't know – what to expect going into this year, but to see all that they've accomplished. And obviously there's a lot more we still need to accomplish, but you can't not be pleased with the progress that's been made. Um, one other thing I miss, what were you guys' thoughts on uh, Chris Braswell's targeting? Now, I was like right there where it happened. And I knew there was really no chance they could, they could uh, over, you know, overturn it or, or, you know, I knew he was pretty much out of there. Um, I mean, I heard, the loud crack when he hit him. I talked to him. <laughs> kind of was like, all right, so what were you thinking there, man? But to his credit, he is a taller guy. Quarterback, you know, kind of went down a little bit when he saw him. He came off the edge, scotch free, like no one touched him. And I did see him try to put out a forearm a little bit. So I think he was initially thinking he was going to try to lead a little bit with the forearm. Unfortunately, the head was just right there. And there was just a loud crack on the sideline. And I was like, oh, yeah, that dang, Chris. Hate it for him because that's you know his last time playing in Brian Denny Stadium and then to to be disqualified. I think there still was a few minutes left in the first quarter, man. I hate that for him. But what were your thoughts on that? I mean, obviously it wasn't intentional. The guy did not mean to just go crack the quarterback. I don't think he personally really thought he was just going to come come clean like that. I mean, it was like an empty set. Typically, if that if they're doing that, you know, and they're they're sliding like that and they're leaving the end free. I mean, it's got to be hot, right? It's something. Uh, but the quarterback just sat there. Or usually they're, they're like ducked down because they know they're about to get killed. The dude just sat there. I mean, I don't even think he really knew what was happening. Uh, but clearly wasn't intentional. I hate that for Chris, but I mean, he really laid the wood on that guy. But you, you just that's why it, as, a, as a defender, man, you just have to – and it's hard because in football, I mean, everything's so split second. It's not like Chris could just go, I don't want to – all right, I'm coming off free. I don't want to get a targeting. Let me put my head to the side and do a regular form tackle. You just have to be prepared for that. You just have to – it has to be second nature to you, right? Um, so, honest mistake. But, like I said on the radio call, 
not that this is there's really anything good from it, but if there is going to be anything good from it, it's that he's not going to miss the second half, or excuse me, he only missed the second half today in today's game. He won't be affected in the, uh, the Auburn game next week, so uh, he'll be back ready to roll. Definitely good, another good learning lesson right there is obviously you know if you can avoid the quarterback's head at all costs because we can't we can't afford losing you right especially in a big game and we were going to need our edge rushers and Chris Braswell is one of the best in the country I don't think he gets enough recognition he's a guy that I mean if you watch him in my opinion I know Dallas Turner um, is going to be a first round draft pick Dallas Turner is is arguably one of the best edge rushers in the country too right um, but watching Chris man I mean he's so technically sound he's got great bend great athleticism really good length um, I don't think he gets spoken about enough I think he's flying under the radar. And if you ask me, I think he's up there with Dallas in that conversation of being a top edge guy taken. Um, just unfortunately, you know, Alabama, there's so much talent around you. Then obviously you got a guy like Dallas. A lot of people are already you know, speaking about, it. there's a lot of buzz about him. You know, there's going to be a lot about it. Just like our running back situation, right? It's like Jason McClellan is, is phenomenal, but I really like Roy Dell as well. I think Roy Dell doesn't get talked about enough. Similar situation there. Um, let's see what else we got in here. Uh, Sam said, how about Justice Haynes? I was, I was pleased with Justice Haynes. He had a big brace on his arm. He might still be a little uh, banged up there, but I think he's going to be a really good football player. Obviously, we've just got a stable of running backs. He was able to score today. Uh, the other true freshmen, is Richard Richard Young. Uh, he was able to get a touchdown. Really rewarding for those young guys. Uh, I know I, I can only imagine that feeling. You know, I remember my first sack uh, was at home against Western Kentucky, man. It's like you worked so hard for that moment, and you finally – get to see it pay off, man. It's, it's so much fun, so gratifying. So I was really happy and excited for those young guys that got those opportunities. Um, what else do we have? Mimi, hey, Mimi, what's up? She says, uh, I'm just happy no one was injured and Braswell gets to play next week. Spot on. You know, that's what that's what you look for. You want to make progress in these games. You want to play to your standard. You want to carry momentum, and you want to ultimately come out of it healthy. And, and that's exactly what um, we were able to do. Right. You know, guys came out healthy. I think Quindarius Robinson got banged up. Uh, he went to clean up a tackle. His head hit a uh, lineman, kind of snapped his neck back. It looked looked very uh, awkward almost. And then he was down for a second, but he got up and he returned to the game. I saw him back in the game. So um, he's good. But other than that, I think we were, we were solid in terms of injury. So definitely a, a blessing um, that we were able to get out healthy. Let's see what else do we have here. Uh, Jim says it took a while for this team to gel and our coaching staff has done an excellent job. Our halftime, halftime adjustments are brilliant. I agree. Yeah. It, this team did take a while to gel, but Jim, that's why I said, you know, on my radio show early on going into the season, each team is different. You know, when you have a new coordinator, a new quarterback, a lot of youth on your team, a true freshman starting at left tackle, right? I mean, you know, you're going to go through growing pains. I mean, you guys can go back and listen to everything I said. Like all, all I talked about was we know there's going to be growing pains, especially on offense. Luckily, we have a very stout defense that's going to help provide a little little bit of relief while they go to that. I said it all the time going into this season, and that's pretty much what we saw. Now, I also said you never know when they're going to click, right? They will at some point. All football teams do. Just like Auburn, like it's, it's they're finally starting to click a little bit this late in the season, right? I knew this football team would finally hit their, their stride. You just never know. I mean, it could be as soon as week three. It could be as late as week eight. I knew it would come, and I knew when it came, this team would be a very dominant and talented football team because they had the pieces, they had the weapons. They just have to be put in place to succeed, and they have to trust and believe in each other and ultimately go out there and execute. Just like to your point about the, the halftime adjustments, right? Coach Saban and this, his staff, they do such a great job with halftime adjustments. Like, you know, as a player, when we go into the locker room, I mean, it's straight business, right? Like, you know, the, the staff is passing out, you know, right stuff or pickle juice or Gatorades. But that's like secondary, right? You do that. You get all that stuff while you're locked in on the board. They're putting up plays that the other team had success with or that we didn't necessarily play the best or that we had errors on. They're putting all those plays up on the board and everybody's seeing, you know, how we played it. If we're going to change how we're playing it, which typically if they're having success doing something, we'll do that. Or if the team's running plays that we didn't see. Uh, too much of on film or didn't necessarily prepare for we'll we'll have adjustments that's typically what it is i think terry on arnold was talking about that like the reason the second half is like that is because number one the adjustments but two you know as a player you're feeling out you're figuring out kind of what they're they're doing and what they're having success with 
and the coaches do such a good job communicating with the coaches in the box, the uh, coaches on the field. They come up with a game plan uh, to basically counter what the team has been having success with in the first half. And you, you've got to tip your hat to this coaching staff. I mean, they've done a phenomenal job this football season with the adjustments, getting this team to, to, to really take shape. Um, and we were talking about this on our show during the week. Um, we feel that this might be Coach Saban's best coaching job uh, of his career, if not one of the best. I mean, it, it's arguably the best um, just because, I mean, to see the progress that they've made, the way that they respond in the second half, um, you gotta you got to contribute a lot of that to these adjustments. So that's a great point, Jim. I agree 100% with you on that. Um, Sam says, how about Robbie Ooze getting a touchdown today? Man, that's awesome. You know, and, and seeing the reactions from the players on the sidelines when he scored, I was surrounded by guys that came swarming uh, from the benches. You know, it's ooze, ooze. Because um, a guy like that, man, you know, they don't necessarily get too much credit. You know, he's he's a grinder, right? You know, he's he's in there blocking for everybody. He's the lead guy. Um, he's doing all type of uh, dirty work, but he doesn't always get rewarded with those touchdowns, right? You know, he because he knows his role, but he takes pride in it. So to see Robbie Oots, who is a Carolina guy, he's from about 50 miles uh, outside of where I was born and raised. That's a shout out to him in that Rock Hill area, but to see him get rewarded with the touchdown um, and to see his teammates celebrate that the way they celebrated, I mean, it clearly shows how much uh, respect his teammates have for him and that uh, they're really happy that he was able to earn that that touchdown. So it's awesome to see a guy like that score. That, that's what that's what's great about these games. Like even you know another example is like when I was playing, we had uh, Ronnie Clark. Man came in my class um, from Polaire, awesome football player. I mean, Ronnie played you know defense went over to, to running back played a little h back played everything but he, he tore his achilles like twice in his career man and i remember i can't remember what game it was but he was able to, to get in and he scored man and just i mean the whole team we almost got a flag the whole team swarmed the end zone just to celebrate him and obviously you know rob boots wasn't necessarily in that situation but seeing guys get rewarded and the teammates celebrate them man it's uh it, it's one of those awesome feelings man it, it, it makes you it's, it's like a wholesome feeling so it was really cool to see him uh, get that touchdown today. Let's see what else we got in here. Um, Jim says, you can see that Reese has been beneficial to the whole quarterback room and his offense overall is looking great. Yeah, no, I mean, I think he's doing a really fine job. You know, I know he's, you know, he was criticized a lot early on. And, and, and look, I mean, that, that's part of it. You know, and coaches, coaches are going to receive a lot of criticism. They also get a lot of praise when things do go well, just like he's getting a lot of praise now. Um, but, yeah, no, I mean, you can clearly tell, you know, he's starting to really work with these guys. He basically said that he meets with Milrow a lot more. They work together um, in unison and um, figure out, you know, what what Milrow likes, what's working well. And, and I think Tommy understands him a lot more uh, as a football player, as a person. Right. You know, Tommy, again, he just got here. Right. So you can see the natural growth and progression uh, between Tommy and, and his unit. And they're playing some really good football. Right. I mean. We talked about we needed more balance. Well, we're seeing that, right? The offensive line is doing a much better job up front. They're doing a much better job in pass pro. It's contributed to, to Tommy Reese calling things that they they now have some chippers in there. They have Robbie Oots uh, helping, you know, chip, right? Running backs are chipping. Uh, and, and the offensive line play is just overall better. And so we're having a much balanced offensive game plan. We're seeing quarterback design runs. We're utilizing Kendrick Law uh, on sweeps, getting him on the perimeter, right? We're, we're throwing some screens, some tunnels. And we're taking those shots. So overall, we're much more effective as an offense because we're balanced. We can run the ball effectively. We can run on the perimeter. And we can take those deep shots. And Jalen Miller is also progressing with the short intermediate route. So, um, yeah, you got to tip your hat, man, uh, to Tommy Reese and the job that that he's done and, and seeing the progress he himself has made as a coach over the course of the season. But, man, I can't believe it. we're already on 45 minutes, man. I'm trying to get you guys an update on this Georgia, my iPad. Uh, well, now, it might have been halftime, but obviously a lot of people are, are watching out for that game, seeing how that goes. Obviously, you know, Georgia's probably going to be Georgia and win. They're, they're finally kind of hitting their stride, too. They weren't the most impressive early on, but looks like it might be halftime. But overall, man, again, you know, a lot of good things from today, really good momentum that's built, um, you know, heading into Auburn next week. What are your guys' thoughts on that? I'll probably get out of here soon. If you guys got any more uh, questions, Hit me with them real quick. I'll probably stay on here a few more minutes, but Sam says uh, 24-10 UGA. Yeah, I mean, 
Tennessee, man, they're all, they're all right this year. You know, obviously they're not playing nothing like they did last year, but I think Georgia's definitely hitting their stride. But uh, I think we match up well with Georgia. I mean, if I'm being honest with you, I, I don't – I think it's going to be a hell of a football game, really. And really, I think was – funny enough, you know, people were complaining about Jalen Miro. I, I, mark my words, I think his athletic ability uh, and his running ability – is going to cause some fits for Georgia if we use him right. Again, if we use him right, and he's confident in his legs and takes off with those with those windows that open up. I'm telling you, I think it's going to cause some fits for Georgia's defense. I really do, and I think as long as we can and can really set the tone uh, defensively for us and get after their quarterbacks, I think when Carson Beck is taking pressure, he's a much different player, just like any other quarterback. Um, I really like our chances. I'm not going to lie. So I, I'm feeling really good about this Georgia game. Now, obviously, we need to take care of business against Auburn. But, I mean, we all know, you know, the Georgia game in Atlanta is, is what we're focused on because I don't know how much you guys keep up with the rankings, but they don't want to show Alabama any love, right? I mean, we're staying put at number eight. They refuse to put us over Texas, um, which is there. I think it's Texas played tonight. Let me look at that real quick. But um, the bottom line is, my dad swears that if we beat Georgia and Atlanta, we went out and we beat Georgia, that we're guaranteed a spot pretty much. I I agree that we should be in. Do I have some slight concern knowing how the committee has been, right? Seeing how they refuse to move us up after, you know, you know we have multiple ranked wins. Uh, our only loss was week two against the Texas football team when we still didn't even have our you know, set team in place, right? Didn't even really have our quarterback situation figured out. If you if you paired Alabama up with Texas right now, I mean it's a totally different story. But with that being said, they still have us at number eight. So look, we just need to focus on what we can control, and that's winning out and, and really having statement games, which we've had the last two weeks. Kentucky game was a statement game. I know this was Chattanooga, but we looked like a very complete football team today. Uh, just got to keep that momentum, and the rest should should work itself out. But I do believe if we went out and we beat Georgia, there's no way they've never held out. Uh, the SEC champion um, in the college football playoffs. Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I don't see how we wouldn't be in there, except unless the committee does what the committee has kind of been doing. That's the only thing that kind of, I, I wouldn't say worries me, but it's just like, I'm just real. like, in my example is, because my I, I, me and my dad got into it about this. And so here's my thing. If, and we can talk about this real quick, I think we still have time that game. So we'll pull up the, the CFP rankings, but here's the thing. This is why it's going to get muddy, folks. You got Georgia number one, Ohio State two, Michigan three, Florida State four, right? Washington five, Oregon six, Texas seven, Alabama eight. If Alabama beats Georgia in SEC championship, yes, we beat the number one team, but then that's also their first loss. How far do they slide, right? That that's a, that's a genuine question because if you go back to last year, TCU, if you guys remember. Their first loss was in the conference championship game. They lost to the Kansas State um, in the Big 12 championship, whatever it is. I can get all those. I don't care about those other, other conferences. They lost in their uh, conference championship game. You know how many spots they moved? Zero. They stayed at number three. So that's something to consider, right? Uh, you've got Ohio State. they got to play Michigan again. Those teams are probably going to be undefeated when they play each other. How far do they move? Florida State, they're uh, – I want to call them a fraud. They're they're like just shy of not being a fraud. I mean, I, look, the ACC is a cupcake conference. We all know that. I mean, their best win is LSU. If anything, I don't think they should make it. But unfortunately, we all know that the committee is, if a team is undefeated and they at least play in some decent conference, they're going to be in there. That's how the committee works. So Florida State probably um, should be in there. And then again, you got to put Alabama. If they beat number one, they should be in there. But Washington will play Oregon. If if Washington lose, loses, that's their first loss. I think they should be out of there if they lose. Uh, so they probably will be out of there. But then Oregon, they're a Pac-12 champion with one loss. It's a decent loss, but they don't necessarily have any super impressive wins. Texas could win out. They're a one-loss conference champion. With all that being said, you've got seven, eight teams that that still have an argument, right? The thing is, we don't have to worry about everybody else. We have to worry about us. And in my opinion, I do believe that Alabama, they went out and they beat the number one team in Georgia, in Atlanta. They should be in because, again, Alabama also has wins over LSU, ranked number 15 right now. 
Ole Miss, who's ranked number 13 right now. Tennessee was ranked number 18. Um, so that's three ranked wins right there. Then they beat Georgia. That's four. Beat number one. So what are your guys' thoughts on that? Do y'all have any concerns about the CFP? Do you do you feel that um, if uh, if Alabama wins out, they're a lock to be in it? What are, you, what are your guys' thoughts? I'll read some of these while you guys comment. Um, I think Sam said Auburn's losing New Mexico State 10 to 7 at the half. Is that true? Let me see. That's true. Dang. So Auburn, see, that's crazy. But again, New Mexico State is 8 and 3. So I'll have to go back and watch that because we I definitely need to lock in and I really want to get make sure we have some good keys for you guys. So I'll go back and watch that and I'll probably hop off here soon. Um and watch the second half for sure, but I'll go back and watch first half too. Uh, Mary says, do you think the CFP committee is punishing us for that Texas loss or that USF bad win? I think it's more so the Texas loss. I think they're they're fixated on it. They, they feel that they can't put us in front of them just because they beat us. I don't know why they have that whole argument because to me that that's just dumb. Like you're not take it's like you're putting that over everything else, over the other ranked wins, over other, you know, like strength of schedule. You're putting that over everything. I don't think that should be done, right? I think it's silly, but Ed says, I'm tired. I'm getting tired of seeing players drop the ball before they cross the goal line. <laughs> I think it happened to a Washington guy not too long ago. I think a couple weeks ago. I think, uh, I think a Washington defender made a good play and he did that. Mimi says, Christian, I think you're right about Milro and Georgia. These guys are working together at the right time. Yeah. No, they definitely are. And, and I'm, I'm telling you, the reason I say that is I just remember, um, I think it was the SEC championship in 2018, my last year, I think because that was the year where Jalen came in for Tua. And one thing I know, know was Jalen's you know, running ability was causing fits for them. And they, they flat out said, you know, we didn't prepare for Jalen and, and his athletic ability. Obviously, these guys are going to know what Jalen Miller can do, but – just because you know what he can do doesn't mean you can stop it. And I think if we come up with a really good game plan, I'm telling you guys, as an edge guy who was responsible for the quarterback, whether it was pass rush, you know, when it's you know zone read and all that stuff, I'm the quarterback player. I can know what they're going to do, but I'm telling you right now, when you have a guy as athletic as Jalen Milrow, it doesn't matter. Like, I still have to out-athlete him. And nine times out of ten, he's probably going to get the best of me. And you're talking about a guy who's really getting hot, Right, he's gaining more and more confidence. The offensive line is playing better. I'm telling you right now, guys. I mean, he, we have some really big playmaking ability. Burton is coming along as a receiver. Bond, our receivers have been playing great. We've got some really good tight ends, man. CJ Dupree, man, he's great in the run game with his blocking ability, but also as a good athlete in the passing game. Obviously, Nye Black is almost like an extra receiver. Um, our stable running backs. I'm telling you guys, it's going to be a really good matchup with Georgia. And, and I think we really might surprise some folks. I'm telling you, I, I really do. Um, Ed says, only scenario where Bama won't get in is undefeated Washington or Ohio State or Michigan FSU, one loss. Um, I'm sorry, I'm getting a call on my computer, folks. Uh, or Michigan FSU and one loss Texas. Yeah, and there's so many scenarios. Like my dad was saying on the radio show, man, I mean, he was mad because I was throwing out all these hypotheticals. But I'm like, look, I mean, we're just reading scenarios because that can happen. It's not like we're stressing saying, oh, no, what if? It's just, all right, this could play out like that, right? And and we would just have to see what the committee thinks of it. Now, obviously, no one knows how it's going to play out. Teams are going to lose. I'll tell you that. Like, There's going to be at least one or te two teams that, that, that lose. But that's to be determined. But, again, as long as Alabama keeps playing the way they're playing, again, two back-to-back -back statement wins. Um, and if they carry that into Auburn, they play a good game against Auburn, and then obviously you defeat number one Georgia. Look, man, I, I I think you have to put them in the playoffs. We're going on almost an hour, man. Guys, this flies by, man. I'm telling y'all. Feels like I just jumped on here. And I think this Georgia game's back on. So I'm gonna answer a couple more and I'm probably gonna get off of here. Um, but again, real quick, just remember, guys, uh, like the video if you haven't, and if, if you like the content, subscribe. Uh, that always helps us out. You can always listen to us on the air Monday through Friday. The Miller's Edge is me and my dad, the pastor of pain. Monday through Friday, 11 to 12 on Tide 100.9. So check us out there. Make sure you follow us on all social media platforms. That way you stay up to date. And just thank you all so much for all the support. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, B. Jamin said, it's like the committee is punishing Bama for beating USF. And by that, I mean punishing uh, for not winning by more, if that makes sense. 
Yeah, I mean, they, they 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 do take those things into consideration. But if I'm being honest with you, I think it's more, you know, the Texas loss. I, I think, not even I think, I know, if we if we would have beat Texas, even if it was by one point, they would, they'd almost turn a blind eye to the USF game. Maybe, you know, I, I get they probably would have a couple of those other, well, it depends. Because we had some impressive wins and, and some good ranked wins. Um, but we still, we would definitely be in the top three. I was three or four, definitely top four. But probably top three. Uh, do about two more, then we're going to hop on off here. Um, let's see. Purple Butterfly is quite the name. Says, uh, after the Texas loss in USF, Bama has continued to improve week by week. Week And Texas is not. They've had a lot of blown leads and struggle wins. That's why a lot of people don't understand why we can't be ahead of um, Texas. I, I, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I get we lost to them. However, if you look at the resume and you look at how these games have been going, again, we talk about the trajectory that Alabama's on. It's been like this, folks. It really has. It's, it, I mean, it's only been up, right? You look at Texas, and I know they've had some injuries. They just lost their running back, too. But they look a little shaky. Uh, they, they don't look like that. I'm telling you, I, they, they really just caught Alabama at the right time, right? They, they caught Alabama uh, in a vulnerable state. Had a lot of question marks, had a lot of things we hadn't had figured out yet in week two. And that's really it. Like, they're a good football team, but deserving to be ahead of Alabama, not in my opinion. So, uh, let's see. Sam says, looking ahead to UGA, they run a lot of screens and a lot of eye candy plays on offense. Our O-line uh, will have to put their big boy pants on and come ready to play. Absolutely, man. Anytime I played Georgia, which I played, um, I think, three total times, played them in the regular season in Athens in 2015, where we beat them, uh, played them in the national championship in 2017. I was second in 26, and I think played them in the SEC championship the following year. Um, so pretty sure I'm 3-0 and against Georgia. But um, what I can tell you is they always are probably our, our, our greatest opponent because they play so similar to us. They're big, fast, physical. Obviously, like, like I mean, they they kind of have our our blueprint, blueprint, right? And they, they Kirby took the recipe over to Athens, um, but it's always a dog fight. No pun intended. Like it really is. Like those those guys are physical, and really, it comes down to two things: who can out physical the other their opponent, and who can outlast their opponent. Because this game is like a heavyweight fight, right? You ever see like big heavyweights, Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder? Just going back, trading blows, right? Like that, that's typically how these games go. And so, in order to win, man, you got to have grit and you got to have toughness. You got to come ready to play for four quarters, right? Because you're, they're definitely going to make some plays. You're going to make some plays, but you got to keep swinging. And whoever can out physical the opponent and outlast them typically wins this game. So, that's kind of what I'm expecting out of this game. Um, well, my dad's in there. He says, Sorry, guys, still at the wedding. So, he's, he's tuned in at the wedding. Well, make sure you're uh, showing off your dance moves. Don't embarrass yourself, though. We don't need you singing. You always try to come on here and use this platform like it's American Idol. So don't do any of that at the wedding. Respect the, the groom and the bride. Let them have their moment. We don't need to see videos of you stealing the show. All right. But enjoy the wedding. Appreciate you tuning in, though. Um, and obviously, we'll get you back on here whenever you're done with the wedding and, and ready to do some more stuff. We can maybe try to come on here early next week but especially because it's thanksgiving on thursday so we definitely need to do an earlier show um alex says uh, number eight Devontae smith was hitting was a hidden force today uh it was hitting with force today absolutely man he was he was so impressive and i talked about him earlier alex just how for a guy that hasn't played all season it's almost like he didn't even have any rust to be knocked off i mean he came ready to go and he was making plays left and right i felt like we kept saying his name over and over and over so to have him come back when you've got some important games coming up um, that's huge, especially when you got Jalen Key out because he pretty sure plays that same position, that free safety position. Um, all right, guys, we're going on an hour, so I'll probably wrap this up and go watch the rest of these football games. Um, but, man, again, thank you all so much for hanging out uh, in this post-game show. Um, again, a really impressive win by Alabama, taking care of the Chattanooga Mock, 66-10, the last home game of the season. Another impressive uh, performance by Jalen Milrow, 13 of 1,697 yards, three touchdowns. Ty Simpson getting some action. Had the little, you know, the uh-oh play dropping the football. But overall, man, he did a nice job operating the offense and displayed some really nice athleticism. Defense played well. Caleb Downs stepping up on punt return. 
right? So really good win today. Carried that momentum. So that was the key, carrying the momentum. That's what Coach Saban wanted, coming out with the right mental intensity. That's what this football team did. So got to tip your hat to them. On to the next one. Uh, oh, and shout out to all the seniors, man, that, uh, senior day today. Shout out to those guys. It was the last time suiting up in Bryant-Denny. Um, so definitely a very special day for those guys. So got to salute those guys of B-Sci-Fi that are going to be moving on and, and play their last uh, set of snaps in Bryant-Denny. Um, so shout out to those guys. But, um, again, really uh, – Fun time hanging out with you guys on the post game show. This is a Miller's Edge. Make sure you like the video, leave some comments, let us know what your thoughts are heading into uh, this Auburn game next week. And uh, again, subscribe if you like the content and follow us on all social media platforms. That way you don't miss a moment. But before we get out here, we clearly have to say thank you to our supporters, which is everybody that's in here hanging out uh, for the post game show, but especially to JD Long, Genevieve's house, and Sam with the accidental $500. Super chat, which we still need to figure out. If, if, I know you said it can be a Christmas gift, but I, again, I just want to make sure uh, that everything's clear, man. I, I don't want to do that to you if that's if that's not. In, in, but again, we'll we'll figure that out. Just go to themillersedge.com. You can email me, and if, if we need to try to reverse anything or do anything, man, I'd be glad to. Because um, that's a lot of money. But again, if if it is, thank you so much, Sam. Uh, seriously, that's crazy. I can't even wrap my head around that, but um man thank you so much and if we don't talk to you guys before um thanksgiving which i'm sure we will try to do so maybe monday or tuesday but hope everybody has happy holidays happy thanksgiving uh remember there's so many things in life to be grateful for um so hopefully you guys uh, get to enjoy it with your families get some get to enjoy some good food and just have an overall great holidays and uh appreciate everybody in here we'll see you guys soon again this is the miller's edge of christian miller pastor Payne, who's at a wedding right now but we'll get him back soon I will see you guys next time. Roll Tide.